So it's officially summer now. It's the time of year we go through the most amount of water. Back behind me, we're trying to grow some grass, but we typically irrigate the garden probably every other day throughout the summer. And then we water the livestock every day, and that's probably 100 gallons a day watering the livestock. So we go through quite a bit of water, and we're on a rural water system, and our water bill is between 70 and $100 a month throughout the summer. So on our property, we have a three and a half acre pond. It is spring fed. It stays full throughout the year. Even in the dry parts of summer, it's, it's full. And typically it's always overflowing water over the overflow. So we've got a great source of water back here. I would like to use this for our irrigation system. I'd like to take the pond water, pump it out, and run it through sprinklers to irrigate the garden maybe even the pasture or the hay field or whatever else we want to come up with. But that's what I want to do today is I want to build an irrigation system that uses pond water. So I've been wanting to do this project for a while. So most of the stuff I actually bought last year, but I never got to it. So I ended up buying a one horsepower sprinkler pump. And the, this one right here is a very common design. You see this exact same pump under 20 or 30 different brand names. So I think you can find this exact same pump really easily. Now it is a 120 volt pump. So it just has a regular outlet or plug-in like you just plug, plug into any outlet in your house. So I should be able to run at least two sprinklers with this pump, maybe even three. But the bad thing about it is, is it cannot take any debris whatsoever. It can't even take sand or it'll tear up the pump. So we're gonna be pumping dirty pond water through this pump that really needs clean water. So we're gonna to have to do what we can to make sure that, that no debris gets in the pump and tears it up. So that's gonna be a little bit of the trick when we build this today. So I ended up buying an inline filter and this is a reusable filter, okay? So you can, you can wash it and reuse it. All it is is a mesh screen and it's really tight mesh. And this will keep the sand or any tiny bits from getting into the water pump. And this is gonna be directly on the intake of the pump. It's gonna be kind of the last line of defense just to ensure we don't tear it up. So for the inlet side of the pump, where it's gonna be pulling in the pond water, I built a strainer out of PVC pipe. I, I drilled tons and tons of eighth inch holes in this two inch PVC pipe. I think I've got close to a thousand holes um, in this pipe right here. And uh, I could have drilled more. Um, I, f I finally just kind of gave up. I got tired of drilling. But this is gonna be like the first filter, right? This, this strainer, is going to keep all of the big stuff from being pulled in or being sucked into the pump. And then the little inline filter we have over here, it's going to get the small stuff. And then hopefully we got clean pond water to be able to be pumped through into the sprinklers. So for the outlet side of the pump, I made this manifold out of PVC and it does have garden hose connections at every port. So we can hook up a total of three garden hoses on here if we want to. So I did build this in pieces, right? And they all thread together, so you can take this back apart if you want to. Even the strainer, even the strainer has a threaded cap on the end, and it's threaded on this end, so you can flush this back out to clean it out later. So everything does take apart to make it easier to clean up. So for these garden hose connections, I just ended up buying some of these simple garden hose shutoff valves, and then we'll be able to turn our sprinklers on and off. So this pump does need to be primed, and what that means is it has to be filled full of water before you start it up, or it won't pump water. It needs water in it to start. So that's what this valve is for here at the top. We can open this up, we can pour water down into the pump and fill it up, and then we can close this off and it should be ready to start up and start pumping water. But the other problem is we don't want the water to run through the pump and go back down into the pond. Um, so we don't, we don't want it to lose the prime when it's not running. So that's where this is gonna come involved. This is a check valve, and this allows water to only flow one direction. And I'm gonna put it on the inlet strainer. 
and then that's going to allow water to flow forward out of the pond to the pump and it won't flow backwards into the pond. So basically when you turn your, your pump off, this will, this will keep the water inside of the pipe and it won't drain into the pond. And then it'll keep the prime, so next time you turn it on, the pump should just work. So the next challenge is this inlet strainer. I don't want it to pull water off the top of the pond and pull in some of that duckweed. I also don't want it to pull water from the bottom of the pond and pull any muck or debris off the bottom. So I need this to really pull in water from like the middle. So that's kind of the challenge. And I think I've got a solution for that. So let me show you what it is. So I ended up taking a five gallon bucket and I put some holes through the bucket. And some of them are big enough that that intake pipe could fit all the way through to the other side. So when you look inside of here, you can see that intake pipe down in there. So when we set this on the bottom of the pond, the water will pull through those holes into the intake and then we'll be pulling water from the middle. We won't be pulling it from the bottom, won't necessarily be pulling it from the top. So I think that fixes that problem. The only problem is, is this is really light and it'll probably move around. So I think I'm gonna put a little bit of rocks, a little bit of gravel down in the bottom of this, probably a few inches and that'll make it weigh enough that I think it'll stay in place. But I think I've got all my pieces put together now. I'm ready to go out to the pond, get everything assembled, and try it out. So I've got my bucket with my intake strainer, and then I've got 10 foot of hose, and then I think I've got about five feet of PVC pipe to connect to the pump. So I'm gonna try to put this in a pond, probably try to pick about a foot deep water, not real deep. There we go. So on the end of the pump here, I've just got a a pipe union and that's going to allow us to just be able to thread this together without having to spin the pipe and there we go we're all connected so i've got some clean water here I'll try to pour this in this little bee hole to prime this pump well i can see definitely putting a bigger end up here to prime this that's a pretty small hole to hit that's just a garden hose attachment right there I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. If I see it I'm trying to pull in some of that duckweed, I may move the bucket a little deeper. But uh, here goes. So I think this pipe going down to the intake is full of air. So I think I need to pour it full of water also. At least that's what I'm gonna try. And that check valve should keep it in there. All right, pipe's all the way full. Go ahead and hook it up. Come on. All right. Now this time I'm just gonna leave this top valve open. And hopefully this is all full of water now. And hopefully it works. Hopefully we get a big geyser this time. Come on. All right. I'm gonna pinch this valve off just a hair. That way it's more like a sprinkler. Here goes. Maybe we should do the definition of insanity. Just keep trying the same thing over and over. Try one more time. Hey, I think we got it. It only took like three times to get it primed completely, but she is shooting water out now. That is good. Get some, get some pressure building up here. 
Oh yeah. All right, we're at full flow and you can't see any of this duckweed pulling toward the bucket. And that's exactly what we want to see. We don't want to be sucking in any of that duckweed. I think it's uh, gonna work the way I want it to. So that was a little tricky getting the pump primed. I think it took me a total of three times before it was finally primed good enough that it had good suction and was able to start pulling pond water in. But now that it's working, we're gonna go ahead and string out some garden hoses, set up some sprinklers, see if we can irrigate the garden. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the sprinkler to the garden. Garden's way up there. I didn't have a, enough hose to do more than one. I can only hook up one sprinkler. But I'm actually hoping this has more pressure than what I usually have. Hopefully one sprinkler will cover the whole garden. Well, I think we got plenty of pressure. I don't know if you can tell. It is squirting out from around the base of the sprinkler. And it's hardly moving. It's moving very slow. So I think we got definitely, I think there's too much pressure for one sprinkler. That's for sure. I've got it right in the middle of the garden. And before I could never reach the corners and it's shooting past the corners now. So it's definitely pretty good pressure. I think it's, I think it needs to have at least two sprinklers hooked up. All right, we've got the garden hose coming from the pump and then it splits to two sprinklers. We've got one over here and then we've got one at the far end of the garden. We'll see how this works. Turn the pump on, turn the hose on. All right. So that's definitely looking a lot better. They're moving like the speed they should. Before they were like barely, almost standing still. Like they were just kind of creeping along with that higher pressure. They are moving normal. They're still shooting far enough to get over the fence and outside the garden, so they're covering the whole garden. And that looks good. That's two sprinklers really off of one garden hose. So I bet you we can run at least three, maybe even four. I think I'm gonna be able to water the garden fairly quickly now. So we'll go ahead and we'll let this pump run for a while and get the garden all nice and watered tonight. We haven't had rain in three weeks. So any, any extra water we put on the garden is a good thing. And hopefully there's a few nutrients in that pond water that'll actually fertilize the garden a little bit. That's what I'm hoping for. And tomorrow we'll come back, we'll take that filter apart and the mesh filter, we'll take that apart and see how dirty it got after this ran for a while. And then, I think my, the next thing I wanna find out is I wanna find out if I can make this portable. Right now it's really close to the house so that I can plug it in, but I'd like to see if I can run it off of a solar generator and then I could move it around wherever I wanted to. I could go on the far end of the pond over there and I could use it to irrigate the pasture or the hay field, or I could even go way down that direction and there's an old well house down there that doesn't have any power, but I could hook this pump up to the old well house. I could use it to irrigate pasture. I could use it to fill water troughs. I could do quite a bit of things with this little pump if it'll run off of one of them portable power stations. So we'll find that out tomorrow. So this morning I pulled the bucket out of the pond and you can tell that the holes are pretty well all clear. I mean, this didn't plug up. It looks pretty good. Ran it for about two hours. I'm gonna check this filter. Water's got a little bit of stuff floating in it in there. But overall, the screen is actually very clean. There's hardly anything in it. You can see there's a little bit of stuff right there. But overall, this thing looks good. So I think I'm pretty happy with the results. So my biggest fear is that this screen, since that mesh is so tight, um, I was afraid that this would plug up in like the matter of minutes, that you wouldn't be able to run the sprinkler pump very long before it would just plug up. But looking at how much is on here, which is very minimal, um, in two hours, I could probably run this for at least probably like a 48 hour period before this would need to be cleaned. So, so far the results are promising. A lot of that has to do with my pond and the quality of the water. When you look at it, it has the duckweed 
floating on top and it looks horrible. But if you actually get the duckweed to the side and you look at the water, it's nice and clear and it's, it's fairly clean. It, I mean, it doesn't look that way, but the water below the surface is actually fairly clean and I think this pretty well proves it. So I'm gonna go ahead and load this up in the truck. I'm gonna take it down to the old well house and we'll take one of our solar generators with us and see if we can pump out the old well. If that works, this is definitely gonna be way more portable and it opens up like a whole new realm of possibilities on what we can actually use this for. Oh, you gotta believe me, that is nasty. <laughs> 